do the rest uh, with my hand. And it was really fascinating to see them finish wrapping the, the ace-like bandage around. And uh, they wanted to uh, put this the, the red things to bind my two fingers together. And uh, when they took the tourniquet off, um, they warned me that I might experience a head rush. I didn't, um, but I was able to watch the, when they took the blind down, my arm was so pale and my fingers were so white. It was really, that was like disturbing. I, it was so bloodless. Well, duh, they, they had a tourniquet on it. So anyway, they take the tourniquet off and the blood didn't go rushing back. It wasn't like, you know, fast. I actually was able to watch it creep down my, from my shoulder to my elbow and then my elbow up to where it was covered. And the, my middle finger turned red. And the very last thing to turn red was actually my, um, the tip of my index finger. And I assume that's because they have, uh, a brace or a, what would you call that thing that's between my two fingers that hold them together? <clears throat> so that the skin graft is pressed up against the fatty layer of my finger. Anyway, Dressing. so he has this, he has a some kind of padding that's pressing the two fingers together right over the graft, so the graft is pressed up against the fatty layer of my finger so that it can adhere better and not have a hematoma, whatever that is. Uh, form and then that hematoma could develop an infection or make it so the graft doesn't take. So, what'd you say, Lo? A hematoma is. So, they put that in to prevent it, and I assume that that slowed down the blood flow between the uh, for my index finger, and so that was the last one to turn white. That's my assumption. I don't know, but uh, <clears throat> then once I got it all wrapped up. Um, I had to hold my hand. By the way, they seat belted me into the onto the table, and what a great idea! So, uh, and it wasn't tight. I could feel it. It, it went across my hips, um, and you know I'm I'm huge, and so I didn't necess I filled the table. Let's put it that way. Um, so having a seat belt was because they didn't have any side rails. It was nice to know that. If all of a sudden I spontaneously decided to roll, I wasn't going to fall off. Um, weird things that uh, I'm sure they had to deal with uh, because some other patients at some point had uh, been injured or something. But anyway, so they undid the seatbelt, told me to wait, and I had to start holding my arm again. Um, and I would hold it across my body like this. By the way, I'm wearing I'm wearing my sling because I wasn't paying attention. I was sitting here, um, on my bed, looking at my computer and, uh, the, uh, my arm completely flopped out, uh, away from my, myself. And I didn't even notice. And my son, my 11 year old son totally went pale and acted like he was about to pass out because it, it just flopped lifelessly. And I was like, are you okay? Because I reached over and picked up my arm and brought it back over. Um, so now I'm wearing the sling, so that won't happen again. Because I'm sure, you know, you full momentum flopping it out to hyper probably could have hurt my elbow or something. So I'm wearing the sling um, until the block is um, completely gone or gone enough so that I can... Oh. Nope, I can't move a finger. I'm trying to move my thumb, and it actually feels like it's moving. Um, right here. So, this is me extending my thumb, and it feels like I just extended it all the way. So, it feels like it's fully extended, and it hasn't moved. So bizarre. So weird. Anyway, um... In the next video, I'll talk about the recovery at home.